welcome back. Thank you for joining me again. Today I'm going to present you with some information on Idun, the Norse goddess of youth, vitality, and immortality. In the grand scheme of things, the other gods and goddesses would be mere humans aging and dying like the rest of us without her. The Norse mythologist Dot com describes her thusly. Idun has attestations in the Poetic Edda and the Prose Edda. Both texts depict her as the wife of the skaldic bo- god Bragi. The Prose Edda also describes her as the guardian of magic apples, which grant eternal youthfulness. In Norse mythology, Idun is the goddess who guards these mystical apples. She is the wife of Bragi, the god of poetry. Here's how the tale goes. The apple's power. Idun possesses a special orchard in Asgard, the realm of the gods. In this orchard, she cultivates apples that grant eternal youthfulness and immortality to those who consume them. These apples are said to keep the gods eternally vibrant and prevent them from aging. The theft of the apples. The giant Thiasi, also known as Thiathi, coveted the magic apples. He managed to capture Idun and her apples and took them to his abode in the land of the giants. The gods aging without the apples. The gods began to rapidly age. Their strength waned and they grew weaker. Realizing the dire situation, they urgently needed to retrieve Idun and her precious fruit. Loki's rescue mission. The cunning trickster god, Loki, took it upon himself to rescue Idun. He transformed into a falcon and flew to Thiasi's lair. There he snatched Idun and the apples, carrying them back to Asgard. Restoration of Youth. Once Idun and her apples were safely back in Asgard, the gods regained their vitality. They continued to enjoy eternal youth and vigor, thanks to the rejuvenating power of the magic apples. In the Prose Edda, a collection of Norse poetry and mythology compiled by Snorri Sturluson, the goddess Idun, also known as Idun, is prominently featured. Here are some details about Idun from the Prose Edda. Idun is described as the goddess of spring or rejuvenation and is the wife of Bragi, the god of poetry. Her primary role is the keeper of the magic apples of immortality. These apples are essential for the gods as they must eat them to preserve their youth and remain immortal. <coughs> Idun is most associated with youth and rejuvenation due to her role as the guardian of the magic apples. Her apples are a powerful symbol of eternal youthfulness. She is a fertility goddess in North mythology who holds the apples of eternal youth the gods rely on to remain young and healthy. The Norse gods were not immortal, they just lived very long lives, and the apples of Idun made this possible. It is thought that originally the apples were some other fruit that was replaced by the apple in the Prose Edda in the 13th century by Icelandic mythographer Snorri Sturluson. A Christian writing for a Christian audience. The earlier 10th century poem Hostelung features the same story of a dune's abduction but does not mention the apples. Although the apple is never specified in the Bible as the forbidden fruit in the Garden of Eden, it had already become associated with the story from Genesis by Sturlson's time and would have been recognized by his audience as a fruit associated with the supernatural. The apple image might have also been borrowed from Greek mythology, the golden apples of Hesperides. Hesperides. A golden apples, as golden apples appear in another Norse tale from the 10th century. The fact that Hostlung made no mention of them, however, suggests that they were a later addition to this particular story. 
Originally, Adun may have represented the concept of personal and familial luck and power, Haminga, generating an internal youth for herself and other deities in the same way a mortal family carried on the memories of the deeds of their ancestors and so kept them forever young and alive without mystical apples. Idun only appears in two tales from the Norse mythology, a section of the Skaldsparmal, Skaldsparmal of the Prose Edda retelling Idun's abduction from Haslung and the Lokasinna of the Poetic Edda. Although rarely mentioned, she is the power behind all better known deities as she allows them to retain their youth and vitality. It has been suggested that Idun herself is the source of this power, not the apples. And the fruit she offers the other gods and goddesses is only the physical manifestation of her own innate abilities to ward off sickness, old age, and death while encouraging life, health, and personal growth. She is a goddess of choice in modern-day Wicca and neo-pagan religious movements for this very reason and is often invoked for health, rejuvenation, second chances, and healing. Idun means forever young, or the rejuvenating one, and defines her as a fertility goddess who encourages the life force. The Hostlong references her as the one who holds the old age cure of the gods and as the maiden who understood the eternal life of the Asir, the deities of Asgard and kept them young. She may have evolved as a later figure with a single responsibility <clears throat> from the earlier goddesses Frigg and Freya, who are themselves thought to be later versions of the Germanic goddess Freya. Idun holds her own among the better known figures as the underlying power of the Asir that enables them to perform their great deeds. Freya and Frigg are both powerful fertility goddesses who may have once been envisioned as keeping the other deities young before that job was given to Idun, who was the wife of Bragi. Poetry was highly valued in the Norse culture for many reasons, but chiefly as a means of preserving one's deeds and celebrating one's life. The subject of a poem lived on long after their death, and this may have associated Bragi with the concept of eternal youth resulting in the job of keeping the gods young, being transferred from Frigg and Freya, or both, to Idun. However, however she came to the role, Idun is understood as one of the many powerful female deities of the Norse pantheon. Scholar H.D. Ellis Davidson comments, While the ruling gods are warrior leaders, ruling a male world, there is nevertheless a strong female element in the Norse mythology as it has come down to us. The goddesses are figures of tremendous vitality, both in generous giving and destruction, and seem to represent ultimate destiny, destiny before whom the gods themselves must go down fighting. The image of spinning, weaving woman, woman's duties overshadows those of human heroes and ruling gods. The women are present in the myths. They stalk across the newly created world in the opening section of Voluspa and survive in humble folk tales of later times, punishing the arrogant and cruel and helping the young and innocent to win good fortune. The best example of Davidson's claim is the Norns, the Fates, imagined as female but there are also goddesses like Frigg, Freya, Skadi, and the long-suffering Sigyn, wife of the trickster god Loki, among others. Idun holds her own among these better-known figures as the underlying power of the Asir that enables them to perform their great deeds and is depicted as a peacemaker and defender of the innocent in the Lokasena when Loki launches his verbal attack on her husband Bragi. The Lokasena, Loki's Taunts, is a work from the Poetic Edda, 13th century, derived from an older piece. The gods of Asgard are seated at a banquet hosted by the Ygir, 
by Aegir, Lord of the Sea, when Loki, jealous of the praise given to the servants, kills one of them and is thrown out of the hall. He returns, however, reminding Odin of a long-ago oath he took that he would never drink unless Loki was present. Odin must either leave the banquet or allow Loki back in, and so orders a seat to be given him. Interestingly, we do not have the attestation or the textual sources for this oath that Odin will never drink unless Loki is present. So that is an unfound document. Um, we don't know where that comes from, when that oath was made, but it's just interesting that it, that mention is present. We don't know what happened between Loki and Odin in reference to that oath. Bragi objects and Loki insults him, calling him nothing more than a bench warmer. And Bragi responds by offering Loki a horse, sword, and ring if he will just behave himself and not insult or anger the guests. Loki insults Bragi again, calling him a coward and the poorest among the gods, which rouses Bragi's anger. At this point, Idun comes between them and speaks to her husband. I beg you, Bragi, think of your children, by blood and adoption, and don't slander even Loki here in Aegir's hall. Loki responds, Silence, Idun. I don't think there's any woman more lustful than you. Not since you wrapped your pretty arms around the killer of your brother. Idun replies, I will not slander even Loki here in Aegir's hall. I will calm you, beer maddened Bragi. I don't want you two to fight. And that is from stanzas 16 to 18 quoted in Crawford. Loki continues to insult the other gods around the table until Thor arrives and he agrees to behave himself to avoid a beating. He is later caught by the gods even though he tries shape-shifting to escape them and is chained in a cave under the earth with a serpent above his head, dripping scalding ven venom on his head. His wife Sigyn catches the venom in a bowl, but when she leaves it empty to empty it, the serpent's venom strikes Loki fully and he writhes in pain, causing earthquakes in the mortal realm. Idun is the first goddess in the poem to address the problem of Loki, and the only one who tries to diffuse the situation. Freya and Frigg both scold Loki, but Idun refuses to play his game and addresses Bragi, not Loki, to keep the peace. By not encouraging Loki, she hopes he will behave and he continues his verbal taunts, accusing each of the goddesses of promiscuity, promiscuity and infidelity. His accusation regarding Idun sleeping with her brother's killer is not attested in any other work. Same with the oath to Odin. So this particular Dilokasena mentions things that we do not have the sources for, but our stories, obviously. And it is thought this charge is simply Loki spinning one of his usual lies, in this case to get a rise out of Bragi. It's interesting that they would say that because all of the other insults that he um, lashes out at, at the gods with and the goddesses with are attested to and true. So... It's weird that they would say that this one particular insult would be a lie. It's out there somewhere, that story. We just don't have it. Idun's Abduction In the Locusena, Idun is presented as a peacekeeper who would rather take Loki's insults than respond to them and encourage further trouble. In the Locusena, Idun is presented as a peacekeeper. Although her effort, efforts fail overall, as Loki continues his taunts, she keeps Bragi from making good on his threat to hold Loki's severed head as payback for ins his insults. Idun's role as Keeper of the Peace is emphasized here, 
but in the tale of her abduction, she is highlighted as the goddess who provides all the others with their essential power and life force. The story is first told in Hostlung, and then later in the Skalds Pramal, Parmal of the Prose Edda. Odin, Loki, and Hornir, possibly the god of intelligence and divination, are traveling and have not eaten in days. They find and kill an ox, but no matter how long they turn it over the fire, the meat will not cook. A large eagle who has been watching from the branches of the tree above them calls out that he is responsible, and if they will allow him to eat his fill, he will withdraw his magic spell and allow the meat to cook. The gods agree, and the ox is cooked, but the eagle eats and eats, taking the best parts for himself until Loki in rage swings his staff at the bird. The eagle takes to the air, casting another spell, which attaches the staff to him and Loki to the staff, and then flies low so that Loki is dragged across the ground along the tops of the trees and through rock-strewn gullies. Loki screams to be released, claiming he fears his arms will be pulled from their sockets, and the eagle replies that he will comply only if Loki brings him Idun and her magical apples that cure old age. Loki agrees and falls to the ground, afterward returning to Odin and Hulnir to continue their journey. He says nothing to them of how he escaped the eagle, but silently begins planning how to coax Idun from the safety of her home among the gods. Once back in Asgard, he tells Idun that he has found a forest with trees producing apples that look better than her own. He says he will lead her there, and she should bring her, bring along her apples to compare them, and she will see he is right. Idun follows Loki to the forest where the eagle, who is actually the Jotun, giant Thiazi, in bird form, swoops down and carries her away to his home. The gods do not seem to miss Idun until they find themselves rapidly aging, becoming old and gray and find she is gone. Gathering in conference, they realize the last time she was seen was with Loki, and they drag him before the group, promising him long torture and death if he does not return her. Loki asks Freya for her falcon cloak that allows a wearer to fly and promises to return with Idun. In the form of a falcon, Loki flies to Thiazi's home in Jotunheim and finds the giant has gone out to sea on a boat. He changes Idun into a nut, grasps her in his claws, and swiftly flies off toward Asgard. Thiazi comes home, finds Idun gone, and pursues in the form of an eagle. The gods watching from Asgard's walls see the falcon fleeing the eagle and quickly prepare and light a pyre. The falcon swoops in low over the pyre and pulls up, but the eagle cannot stop his momentum and flies into the flames, catching fire and falling to the ground where he is killed by the gods. Idun is restored to her formal, former role and the gods presumably eat of the apples and become young again. In the house long, there is no mention of the apples as noted, and it seems to be Idun's mere presence that keeps the gods young. <clears throat> Although Sturlson may have added the apples as a nod to the fruit in the Garden of Eden, scholars have also suggested that the addition may come from classical Greek mythology, the golden apples of Hesperides. The Garden of Hesperides belonged to the goddess Hera, planted with trees that produced golden apples, a gift from the earth goddess Gaia on her wedding to Zeus. And so associated with fertility and rejuvenation, the golden apples appear in a number of Greek myths, such as the Judgment of Paris that starts the Trojan War, but are probably best known from the eleventh labor of Hercules, when the hero steals three from the garden. According to this interpretation, the story of Adun's abduction mirrors the theft of the golden apples, whose value is highlighted in the Norse tale. Scholar Rudolf Simic 
Notes In the myth of the theft of Idun, the concept of the rejuvenating apples is linked with the common tale of the theft of a goddess by a giant. And although this myth was obviously not particularly well known and might have been influenced by tales of classical mythology about Hesperides apples, this could have happened already long before the literary age. Perhaps it was the scholarly Icelanders of the 12th and 13th century who first united the classical legends with the information in the Hostlung. Davidson also recognizes the possible connection between the golden apples of the Greeks and those of Idun, but notes that apples were already associated with fertility in Norse mythology, as were nuts, and perhaps neither were borrowed from elsewhere. Golden apples were among the gifts offered by the god Freyr to Gerd in the poem Skirnismal, and refusal to take them was to mean sterility and decay. Apples were a known symbol of fertility, together with nuts, and both are brought into the tale of Idun, since Loki is said to have changed the goddess into a nut so that he could bring her back to Asgard. The Skirnismal, from the poetic Edda, is thought to have been composed about the same time as the Hostlung, in the 10th century, and so the concept of the apple as a symbol of fertility would have been known then. It is unclear then why the Hoslung would omit the apples unless they were considered irrelevant to the nature of the goddess. It is possible that a dune was understood to represent the concept of Haminga, usually translated as luck closer to one's personal glory and power passed down to one's descendants. Haminga was personified as a powerful woman, a seeress or Valkyrie, who was the guardian spirit of a given family or of a specific member of a family. The Haminga was passed down through generations and so symbolized continuity as well as eternity and perpetual youth. If a dune was understood as embodying Himinga, she would have needed no apples. Conclusion A dune as an embodiment of Himinga would correspond to her role as a fertility goddess in that fertility was understood not only as a birthing but also any kind of rebirth. In Norse belief, nothing ever ended but died only to assume a new form. Haminga was understood as good luck or special prowess of one family member reborn to another of the next generation. Davidson elaborates, In the Viking Age, a child would usually be named after someone in the family who had died, frequently a grandparent. This could have developed out of an assumption that the dead might in some way return in his descendant or that at least the former luck and strength which he had enjoyed might accompany the name. Such conceptions seem particularly to be associated with the fertility powers and there is a strong link between them and the burial mound. Davidson further notes that fertility goddesses were thought to predict, predict the destiny of those on the cusp of adulthood, drawing on their recognition of the power the child had inherited from a deceased family member. Idun's power to keep the gods young and healthy may have been an illustration of this concept, in that the dead never actually died as long as their haminga was passed on to the younger generation. The deceased then became forever young, as long as this process continued, just as it was with the gods who, even in their death at Ragnarok, contributed to the rebirth of the Nine Realms of Norse cosmology and a new world. In the present day, Idun is invoked for just this kind of rebirth by neo-pagan and Wiccan practitioners. Supplicants may ask for help in quitting an unhealthy habit, in leaving behind a toxic relationship, or in finding their purpose and path in life. 
In every case, the individual is seeking a new road to follow that will reward them with the same rejuvenation Idun offered the gods of Asgard. To work with, your, with Idun in your daily practice, here are some ways to include her. Daily devotion and offerings. Devotees of Idun may honor her through daily prayers, expressing gratitude for the blessings of youth, vitality, and health. Simple offerings such as apples can symbolize reverence and acknowledgement of her role as the keeper of the magic apples. Seasonal celebrations. During spring festivals, people may invoke Idun to ensure a fruitful and rejuvenating season. Harvest festivals could also include offerings to Idun, recognizing her connection to the earth's bounty. Personal reflection and renewal. Individuals seeking rejuvenation or healing might meditate on Adun's qualities. They may visualize themselves taking partaking of her magical apples, absorbing their life-giving energy. Symbolic Acts Some practitioners might perform symbolic acts like planting apple trees or tending to existing ones as a way to honor Idun. Carrying a small apple charm or wearing apple-themed jewelry can serve as a personal reminder of her presence. Poetry and Song Idun's husband, Bragi, is the god of poetry. Invoking Idun through poetry, songs, or chants can celebrate her role in sustaining creativity and inspiration. Remember that Norse mythology emphasizes the interconnectedness of gods, humans, and nature. While there isn't a specific prescribed ceremony, genuine devotion, mindfulness, and acknowledgement of Adun's significance can form a meaningful connection with this goddess of youth and vitality. If you enjoyed this and have a moment, please share with someone you think might enjoy this as well. Give the sub button an apple on your way out. All sources for this video will be in the description and I now have a donation button if you'd like to thank me and help me get a new mic. Thank you again and I'll see you next time.